Well, then let's start Popo's Bizarre Adventures. Um, Edward, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's A-T-E-S. Um, Eights, um, I guess. Um, Edward Eights is uh, a gentleman from uh, Waxahachie, Texas. Um, he's 54 years of age. Um, I mention this because it matters. He is a black man. Um, he, 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 he was released, uh, uh, after 20 years, right? Um, he was released in 2018. Okay. Four years after he was released after 20 years for a crime that the police had zero credible evidence to convict him on. He is still attempting to clear his name. In 1993, in New Chapel Hill, Texas, about eight miles east of Tyler, Texas, like it fucking matters, like any of the godforsaken shitholes is any place that any of us are aware of, but Elnora Griffin, age 47, was stabbed to death. Terrible, tragic accident. Um... Griffin and she were neighbors at the time. Now, the medical examiner testified that Griffin was grabbed by the neck and it's common for someone to defecate as a result of such pressure. Now, this is important because the police found a footprint in the feces of Elnora. Elnora got choked out and she shit herself. That's, 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 that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Elnora got choked out and shit herself and somebody stepped in the shit. Now there was a footprint in the shit. Now the police attempted to link the perceived footprint in the feces back to our man, Edward, right? Now they, based their entire case on this shoe print in the feces. He was arrested and charged with Griffin's murder. And although he was released on, uh, on, on, from jail on a bond uh, a few months later, his trial didn't take place until July in 96, three years, Jesus Christ, just hanging over your head. Imagine the, the, the psychological torture of having a murder rap hanging over your head this entire time, right? The trial, judge declared a mistrial. Straight up, judge was like, it's a fucking mistrial. So in August of 1998, prosecutors tried Edward again, focusing on the feces, except this time, this time, the jury was an all-white jury. The evidence against Edward was that he had fecal matter on one of his shoes. Want to know where the fecal matter came from? Edward was walking his dog and stepped in some dog shit. The caboose got there. Dog. But it was an all-white jury in rural Texas, and Edward is a black man. So they convicted him, and they uh, sentenced him to 99 years in prison. (sighs) In 2015, the podcast Truth and Justice took, let's call it an interest in his case, the um, Rob uh, Rob Ruff, uh, I'm sorry, Bob Ruff, the the host of the podcast, contacted Edward, and basically they hit it off. They became quick friends, and Ruff is an attorney, so Ruff got the Innocence Project of Texas involved. And became his solicitor, became his attorney, and started the ball rolling. Uh, according to Edward, Rob to- uh, Bob told him straight up, I'm going to get you out of here. It's going to take me a while, but I'm going to get you out of here. 
So through the Innocence Project of Texas, uh, 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 an attorney by the name of Allison Clayton, in combination with Bob Ruff, began to investigate the case. <clears throat> um, here's a quote by Allison Clayton of the Innocence Project of Texas. The lack of any kind of objective evidence uh, most crime scenes will contain, especially crime scenes as violent as this one, right? She was drawn to the case in part because the lack of any kind of objective evidence most crime scenes will contain, especially crime scenes as violent as this one. So <clears throat> she got the Smith County District Attorney to agree to retesting the feces on his shoe. Then we can come back with DNA testing all these years later and say definitively that the feces on his shoe was not Elnora's feces. The district attorney, of course, drug their feet, but let's say, all right, let's go for it. Oh, he was denied parole twice, by the way. Edward was denied parole twice. You want to know why Edward was denied parole? Because he refused to admit he did it. He refused to confess. Because he refused to confess, they were going to hold him in jail indefinitely. If he had only admitted legally that he had done it, if he confessed to the crime, rendering it a true guilty plea, they would let him out of jail. He refused, so they held on to him. Well, <clears throat> fast forward. <gasps> Guess what? The feces doesn't match. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed that the feces doesn't match? Um, here's the thing, though. After releasing him, they've yet to announce him innocent. They've let him out of jail but they have not cleared Edward's name. They refuse to redact and renounce the previous conviction. They refuse to remove it from the record. They refuse to strike the case. They refuse to do any of that. They still, as far as the state of Texas is concerned, qualify Edward Eights as a convicted murderer even though they were forced by the Innocence Project of Texas to let him out of jail because they wrongfully convicted him. Yeah. Here's my advice to you. Don't ever set foot in Texas, especially if you're a person of color or a member of the LGBTQ plus community. That state is a fucking shithole. Don't ever go there. It's a nightmare. Or or a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Or a woman. Good good point. Fucking good point. Or a woman. Just just don't don't go there. Um yeah, like if that's <laughs> that's just, you know. Um yeah. That's that's essentially the story of Edward Eights. It's a literal dog shit state. Yes, it's a literal dog shit state. That is the story of Edward Eights and his 25 year quarter of a century. His quarter of a century just travail in trying to clear his name with the state of Texas because they convicted him, the all-white jury convicted the black man based on dog shit on his shoe that they failed to test and claimed it was the feces of a murder victim he was a neighbor of. The cops in this shithole of New Chapel Hill, Texas, literally rocked up to a murder victim's house and just went, black man, and threw him in jail. That was it. They literally looked for the nearest black man and tossed his ass in jail and kept fucking hammering that case until they impaneled an all-white jury and got the conviction on completely dog shit grounds that they wanted. 
No. No, there's nothing. I'm sure there's no systemic issues right there, right? There's nothing nothing going on there. Uh, meanwhile, yes, meanwhile, can we talk about poor Elnora Griffin? Elnora Griffin got choked to death in her own fucking house. And because these racist piece of shit cops, district attorney, judge, and jury members all were obsessed with scary black man, her murderer's been free to live, well, basically probably most of their adult life out. This isn't just about the, there's a, a brilliant point, Beeson. Thanks for getting me on to that point. This isn't just about the miscarriage of justice uh, 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 directed at poor Edward Eights. And I'm sorry, Edward, if I'm pronouncing your name, if it's a titties, a tease or something, I, it's it, A-T-E-S. I think it's Eights. Um, it's not just about the miscarriage of justice for Edward. It's about the miscarriage ju of justice for El Nora, right? Like for every racist bullshit falsified conviction that the state does, what you end up with is a murderer wandering around free. You end up with somebody who committed the crime just free to do what they want because, you know, scary black man lives next door. I'm sure he did it. Uh, story number one. <laughs> Let's bring it up a bit. Let's bring it up a bit. Um, the NYPD is being sued for $30 million by one woman. She's an Instagram influencer of some degree, form, or fashion, apparently. A woman by the name of uh, Eva Lopez. She was coming home. She was um, vacationing with her boyfriend. Um, she was vacationing with her boyfriend in, um, you know what? Let me try something. Um, give me one sec here. Forgive me for segment viewers that are watching this after the fact, but I want to try something really quickly. Um, let's see. It's that, and then it's that and then let's do that okay um so ava lopez was vacationing in florida with uh her boyfriend um you know she's just um she's an instagram influencer whatever that uh accounts for right whatever that entails take it for what it is but while i may have a um <clears throat> perception of influencers, right? They are no more or less human beings and deserve to be treated with respect and dignity by any of this bullshit system. Um, so, oh, uh, did you not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I said it at the top of the, the segment. Um, her name was uh, Elnora Griffin. That was, I, I mentioned it at the very beginning of the segment. Um, so there you go. That buffering absolutely throws things out of alignment. All right. Okay, that's better. Um, so anyway, on to Ava Lopez. Um, Ava Lopez was stepping off the plane, uh, August 16th of last year, and she found out that she was a wanted woman. How did she find out she was a wanted woman? Well, a friend of her boyfriend, um, texted him and said, what's going on? And his her boyfriend, I'm sure, was, well, what do you, what do you mean? And he sent them this.
the city of New York police department sent out flyers for a case of grand larceny. Here's the issue. Attempting to identify the subject pictured above for grand larceny on August 3rd, 2021, the complaint's roommate did reply to an online escort advertisement, and while the subject was at his apartment, the subject did remove complainant's Rolex watch valued at $13,000 and a Chase credit card without permission or authority to do so. Here's the issue. One, she's not an escort, never has been has no history of operating as an escort. That's literally not what she does. Um, And two, they just grabbed a photo and put it on a fucking wanted poster. The detective, a man by the name of Kevin Dwyer, whose name is listed on on the flyer, Here we go. Okay. Please notify Detective Kevin Dwyer. When she called, said Detective Dwyer, he already knew it was an issue before she called, according to the legal filing itself. Dwyer told Lopez the wanted poster had already been taken down from the uh, department's Facebook page and other websites as the real perpetrator had a sl- an entire sleeve tattoo and Lopez does not. They literally grabbed the first fucking Latina picture off of Instagram apparently and just threw it on a wanted poster with just reckless abandon and then spread it around all of social media. I mean, they accused her of essentially being a prostitute. They accused her of grand larceny and they spread it around a social media system that immediately went to her friends, family, like People, business contacts. I mean, I'm sure like being an Instagram influencer relies heavily upon reputation, right? The the, the perceived image, the reputation, the, the marketable image, right? She is now being perceived as a thieving prostitute. So in one go, they managed to undermine her career, They managed to undermine her personal reputation and they managed to undermine multiple friends and family, familial relationships because as her own, uh, uh, as her own, uh, testimony states, it's was already being spread around social media, but to this day, it's still being passed around and talked about and people are quote, making me look like a thief and prostitute. She wasn't even in town during the alleged time frame of the, uh, of the crime. She wasn't even there, but Hey, you want to know how they, they, they came to this picture. Apparently the detectives who for some reason, uh, um, were shown a picture of Lopez, who apparently has almost a million followers, by the way. <clears throat> and that was it. That was that was you. Were, you were waiting for some sort of like qualifying statement, right? The detectives were shown a picture of Lopez. And so she was clearly the criminal. Even though the description doesn't match from the victims, that that's it. The, 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 the cops saw a picture of a sexy Latina 
And she clearly had to be a prostitute. She clearly was a thieving prostitute. She's a, she's a, sec, uh, a self-empowered sexy Latina on Instagram. So she had to be the criminal, even though she didn't match the description by a long shot. <sighs> she's still attempting to recover her reputation to this day. Um, she's, she's stated, she, she has straighted, uh, straight up uh, stated that, um, that uh, her Instagram career basically has been negatively impacted by this. It's a clear case of defamation. It's a clear case of multiple things. I'm sure a clever attorney can come up with multiple things that they should be charged with either way. Um, she's suing the NYPD for $30 million. I hope she gets every fucking cent. Maybe, maybe, maybe if enough sexy Latinas get uh, get $30 million out of the NYPD, maybe then the citizens of New York will think about overhauling their system. Because the fact of the matter is, is that apparently the, the citizens of New York are fine with having a police department that literally just sees the first picture of a person like some sort of weird Alzheimer's dementia patient and says, yeah, that's her. That's the criminal. Does zero investigative work, does zero detecting, literally uses a photo of somebody who does not match the description of the suspect and then proceeds to spread around wanted posters like it's the fucking 1800s in the fucking wild west of this woman on social media. Where, it, by the way, which is her workplace. Social media is this woman's workplace. Imagine if the cops showed up to your job and then proceeded to tell all of your coworkers, all of your bosses, all of your clients, say you worked in sales and they called up all your clients, told all your coworkers, told your boss, your manager, the owner of the company, told everybody. And by the way, you know they're a thief and a prostitute, right? That's what they did. Only they did it essentially to a million plus people. I hope she gets every fucking red cent out of those assholes. And later, Jay, take care of yourself. And I hope there's a legal change and they fucking take it out of the pension of the cops. I hope, I hope every single cop in that precinct has to pay that money. I hope somebody's, I, I, I hope, you know what? Oh, God, no, Glazy, do the NYPD's awful. Oh, no, of course it won't happen non-binary. Of course not. Uh, hey, Glazy, the, the NYPD's, they're bad. I mean, they're bad. Like, they're bad, bad. Yeah, no, they're, yeah. Like, rough you up just because you're black walking down the street bad. Yeah. And that's not even like, dude, they, they, they got raked over the coals for that shit. They got raked over the coals for that shit. Dude, they, they would fucking hassle a black dude just for walking around. Yeah, broken windows policing was was literally the NYPD. If 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 there's a like if there's p poor people, they give they police them harder. Yeah, marginalized communities police them harder. Stop and frisk. That's all NYPD. That's all born of NYPD, dude. They're they're arguably one of the worst in the world. Um. Arrest you for sex work while because you're walking while trans. That's NYPD. Dude, no, arguably the NYPD is one of the worst police departments in the entirety of the world. Yeah. And that's including places like China. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, that's including places like China. Dude, the NYPD is awful. Uh, so, anyway, that's the story of uh, Ava Lopez. I, I hope she gets every fucking cent. Um, this one's a quick one. Um, 
when Stop and Frisk got struck down, they admit uh, they admitted they had stopped more black people and brown people than there were black and brown residents in New York City over the program's lifetime. From from an attorney. That's from an attorney right there. All right. Fucking just remember where that's coming from. When Stop and Frisk got struck down, they admitted they had stopped more black and brown people than there were black and brown residents in New York City. That means they're hassling people two, three, four times a day. Oh, no, it's it's Stop and Frisk is still still fucking going. Um, <laughs> geez, I'm sorry, got bonked. Um, yes, the NYPD has international offices. They have intelligence divisions. The NYPD actually has offices in places like London and Paris and like, I think Brisbane or something or Sydney. Um, yeah, the NYPD isn't just isolated in New York, by the way, the New York police department is a global organization. Figure that shit out. I saw a Vegas bike cop lose his mind screaming at the lady in front of the convention center today. Do the bike cops here? And when Cassidy says bike cop, we mean bicycle, right? We mean bicycle, not motorcycle. Um, the, the bike cops here in Vegas are the most emasculated, overcompensating pieces of shit that you have ever met. Every single one of them is dog shit and deserves to be like just shipped off to an island somewhere and given therapy because frankly, they need it. Every last one of them's got like small dick syndrome. It's ridiculous. They, it, it, the, the bike cops are the worst here in Vegas. They're, they're super aggressive. They're very aggro. They will fucking hassle anyone and everyone. And they snap at a moment's notice because frankly, they're a joke. Everybody sees them as a joke and it affects their ego. So... Uh, Kai advocating for island gulags for bike cops now. What I'm advocating for is therapy centers somewhere far from society so we can fix these broken individuals and then we can bring them back. Because frankly, they're murdering us. They're murdering us. They're murdering us. Um, he was a total aggro asshole who completely snapped on this poor lady trying to drop someone off. Yep. Sounds about right. Uh, I don't know if we can do that, Kaiser. I don't know if we can do that. I got to pull that, Kaiser. I got to pull that. Um, on to the next story. This one's a quick one, okay? This one happened in um, Decatur, Alabama. Alabama, one of the best places in the in the world, right? Alabama doesn't have any um, <clears throat> problems. Um, so, <laughs> Kevin Penn, Kevin Penn owns a liquor store in Decatur, Alabama. He's he's literally the owner of the store. Now, he was um, robbed. He was robbed, straight up. Someone attempted to rob a liquor store owned by a black man in um, oh in Decatur, Alabama. So that fix didn't do it. Oh, encoding overload, uh, overloaded. Okay, okay, okay. All right, now I know what that's about at least. Um, I need to check the encoder settings. All right, so a, a black liquor store owner in Decatur, Alabama was robbed. Happens, right? Like it's, you know, yeah. So let's see what happens. Well, a police officer by the name of Justin uh, Rippon uh, responded on March 11th. Well, um, how did he respond? Well, he rocked up, punched the owner in the face and broke his jaw. I'm not kidding you. He he literally reacted with unjustify, unjustifiable violence, false charges, and uh, and um, f uh, and violated multitudes of constitutional rights. He um, essentially what happened was is the white cop Justin Rippon rolled up, res responding to a robbery call to a liquor store saw a black man, immediately fucking assaults him, punches him in the face, breaks the man's jaw, tackles him to the ground, 
and amidst this, fucking decides he's going to arrest him. Even though the guy is screaming, I'm the owner of the store, he, po- he, pos- he can't possibly be the owner of the store. He's black. So clearly he's the thief and he's lying. Well, Justin finds out that in fact uh, that, uh, that Mr. Penn is the owner of the store. So he then makes up charges that he assaulted him and that he refused to comply to lawful orders and that in the non-compliance of those lawful orders, he resisted arrest and got violent. And that's how he was, he sustained his injuries. Yeah. Well, that's made its way to federal court. Uh, this, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the typical bullshit, um, obstructing, uh, obstructing governmental operations, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest. Um, that's, that's how that went. Um, yes. Um, the mayor, this is, this is my favorite part. Statements by city officials are my favorite parts of these stories. They're always amazing. They're always so tone deaf that it's just, it blows my mind. Here is Decatur Mayor Tab Bowling. If this doesn't scream, just redneck, right? The mayor's name is Tab Bowling. I regret that a lawsuit has been filed, but I refer all, uh, all comments and remarks to city attorney Herman Marks. That's it. He regrets that a federal civil rights lawsuit has been filed on the part of a, bl- a local black small business owner who was violently assaulted by one of his police officer. He regrets that a lawsuit was filed, but the city attorney will have to ha- have to handle all the comments from here on out. I'm sorry you're offended. I'm sorry you feel that way. That's that's all we say. It's it's the most tone deaf non apology that you could possibly give. I regret that a lawsuit has been filed. How about you regret that your officer broke the jaw of one of your citizens because he's a racist piece of shit who assumed that a black man can't own something? You stupid fucking piece of shit. Holy fuck, your entire godforsaken town is just a racist hellhole. What is wrong with you people? So, yeah, like I said, just a, just a one-off, just a one-off. Uh, do we have video of this one? I think this is the, yeah, this is the one we have video of. Hang on. Let me get you, let me get you video. Okay, pause. Yeah, I think this will work. I think this will work. Right about there. Okay. Honey, what should we call our baby? Looks at a can of energy drink. Uh, Tab. Looks across the street. Bowling. Honey, our last name isn't even bowling. I said what I said. Exactly, Caboose. So, American Fork. This is a town. American Fork. Okay, it's a town. It's a real fucking place. It's in Utah. American Fork, Utah. It's been two years since this occurred. All right? Two fucking years. But because of the inaction, federal lawsuit has been filed finally. They put against the police officers who were arrested as well as the police department itself. Now, this guy is a man by the name of Cody Greenland. 
He was in a Target parking lot on April 17th, uh, 2020. The, um, essentially, the, um, <laughs> he, the police were responding. I love these stories where the police, hey, thank you for the follow, even though that name is. Um, the police, I love the stories where the police are responding to a call and they just sort of like pick someone. Right. Like those are we did one where the, the guy was the uh, the Hispanic dude was in the car, it, like in the neighborhood. And they're like, he's clearly guilty. And they fucking shoot the dude. Right. Like I, I, I those stories where the cops just like pick a person and like that's the guilty subject. Like clearly that's the guilty party. Um, the police were responding to a call of an unidentified male, possibly, possibly, possibly breaking into cars. Really peaky. Holy shit, that's weird. Um, it, the name is there to distinguish it from Estonian tongs and Singaporean spatula. That is, that's a true fact. That is a true fact. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's completely accurate. You can, you can Wikipedia that shit. Quick, somebody added the Wikipedia page for American Fork. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Greenland was at the location after his mother dropped him off at the Target where his girlfriend works and he was carrying a duffel bag of personal items after having been kicked out of his apartment. All right? So after unsuccessfully attempting to call his girlfriend with his mother's phone, he said he tried to put the bag inside his girlfriend's car, but it was locked. All right? This is it. This is what was happening. It's a sad situation. The guy's been kicked out of his apartment. He's fucking, he's not doing well in life. He's broke, clearly. Like, it's, it's not a good situation. Cut to the footage. If you didn't catch that, it happens fast. It happens fast. Boom. Okay. Please note. Please note that Mr. Greenland is on his hands and knees with his hands up. Uh, he's on his knees with his hands up and he gets tackled from behind. Boom. Full tackle at a full sprint. We'll get to see the other, uh, other angle here in a moment. So, okay, here's him on the ground, on the knees, hands up, boom, fucking, all right, here's the, <laughs> and let's get a good picture of him afterwards, hang on. Do believe? Nope, nope. There we go. There we go. And there we go. <laughs> according to Mr. Greenland, according to Mr. Uh, 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 according to Mr. Greenland. He could hear the officer running at him. He could hear the, the, the equipment on him bouncing. The go, 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 go. He could hear the footfalls. And there was nothing he could do. He said, I was aware of it. I could hear him sprinting at me. And all I could do was, uh, was, uh, was remain still. The, um, the cop put his knee into his spine upon contact. When he tackled him, he brought his knee up and connected on his spine and drove it in and dropped him to the ground face fucking first. So he has contusions and scrapings on his face as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea, quote, I had no idea what they were there for until I was beaten and bloodied. I still avoid that area. 
my kids are scared to drive through American Fork City, stuff that I've known my whole life. The uh, police department has yet to respond. Oh, also they threw him on some trumped up charges. He had like a a pipe on him. He had like some weed pipe and shit like that. So they threw a a paraphernalia charge at him. Um, (laughs) Marcus said, in some jurisdictions, it's permissible to violently resist an unlawful arrest. Anyway, what were we talking about? Um, Yeah, the police department has yet to respond to the lawsuit. um, But, quote... This is, this is how you know, this dude, this is, this is how you know you're like, this is, this is the speech of an abuse victim. Okay. This is, this is the speech of an abuse victim. This is somebody who's been abused by society. This is propagandized, brainwashed abuse victim speech, right? I mean, honestly, it would be great if they would give the police the right training. I want to continue to help people and just spend time with my family and not have any worries that this is going to continue on or happen again. That's it. Even after all of that, after taking a flying tackle to the back with a knee driven into his spine and his face grated across the fucking pavement like a goddamn cheese grater, this dude thinks that he can, we can train our way out of this. He's like an abused dog. He's like an abused wife. He's an abuse victim. This is, this is what we talk about as anarchists. This is our talk. These are our talking points, guys. This sort of stuff right here. This guy was literally the victim and he's still sitting there going, but I'm sure we can fix him. I still love him. I still want to be with him. I just, I just, you know, maybe we can fix him. No, honey. No, sweetie. You need to leave. You need to break up with them. They're abusive. And there's no fixing that. There's just no way around that. It is very much Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, it's that territory. Yep. So, there we go. Another one down. Another one fucking down. Uh, This one we have video for as well. It's like, you know, we got a couple of back-to-back videos here. New video now. Um, let me try and get the position. Um, this is John uh, John Monro- uh, Monroe. He's a uh, West Palm Beach uh, gentleman in his 60s. Uh, if you're <laughs> wondering uh, the degree um, here. But I can say... That in this instance, at least charges were filed against the police officer and the police officer has turned himself in. So he is now in custody. But let's look at how a police officer approached, but we can't live with dish, uh, without dishwashers. How do we live without cops? Oh, weasel. Um, it, yes, he, um, he, he is in his 60s. I believe he's 64 or something like that now. Um, this, this is, um, uh, John Monroe, I believe is this poor gentleman's name. Um, let's, let's just, let's just watch how this police officer handles approaching an individual in a parking lot. Uh, did you notice? Notice a couple of things. Let's take this through. All right. Let's take this through as we do. All right. The cop walks up behind Mr. Monroe, touches him aggressively on the back of the head. He turns confused. The cop then grabs him, slams him into the fucking vehicle mashes his head down by neck. Then when they have him pinned with the officer, what the fuck is the bot trying to do? Um, 
And there's a left hook from the partner. Oh, yes. Observation one. John is black, of course. And now here's the chokehold. Keep in mind, this is this is a 60-year-old man. This is a 60-year-old man. He's putting up a good fight for a 60-year-old. Just Okay. Here is John Monroe. Right here. This is John Monroe. This is the terrifying individual that was so dangerous that the police officers decided that he must be smacked up, uh, upside the head, slammed into a hood, punched in the face, choked out, dropped to the fucking ground, and beat. West Palm Beach police officer, officers showing their, um, you know, showing their true colors, as it were. Um, also, I think it's worth pointing out that the arresting officer was white. Right? This, this, this was an elderly black man who was assaulted. For no reason, no reason, no reason. They assaulted a black man, an elderly black man, or a man, uh, not elderly necessarily, but definitely of advanced age, uh, uh, a man of advanced, a gentleman of advanced age. And, oh, hang on. Let me see some shit. There we go. Yeah, Twitch is having issues right now. Just so everybody knows. Twitch is having issues. Uh, their chat system is having issues. I, I'm, I'm getting notifications behind the scenes for certain things. Their, their, their chat system is having some issues. So um, I see it, Caboose. Um, but just know that, like, yeah, chat is a little finicky right now. Um, so this is a dude they walked up behind of advanced age, smacked him upside the fucking head, basically, like came up behind him, like assaulting him, slammed him into a fucking hood of a car, fucking... Cheap shot at him, cheap shot him in him in the fucking face with a left hook, choked him out, drop him to the ground, and then proceeded to beat him. Uh, yes, he wasn't assaulted for no reason. He was assaulted while living uh, while living while black. Exactly non-binary. That is correct, non-binary. You you are you are correct. Thank you for that correction. He wasn't assaulted for no reason. He was assaulted because he was a black man in a parking lot, probably. Um. So, anyway, there's Paul West Palm Beach checking in on Florida. Right. Let's 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 do the rounds. Right. New York, Texas, Florida. Let's just do the rounds, y'all. So, <clears throat> we have a BMIP on 82nd, dispatching units now. BMIP, black man in public. Mm. Oh, um, well, don't worry. I actually, I actually have a story um, somewhere. Okay, is it this one? Nope. This one. There's one. You know what? Let's skip to it. While we're talking about being a black man in public, <clears throat> um, a black man in New Jersey. Um, this one, this one's bad. This one's bad. This one's bad. I, I this one, this one irritates the fuck out of me. All right. So this is uh, clearly like me manipulating the narrative, but here is a picture of our, our individual. This is Jawan R. Henderson, age 29 with his, uh, with his baby. Okay. I just, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna front load. I'm going to make a, a, a pathos appeal here. I'm going to openly let you know what I'm doing. I am, I, I'm making a pathos appeal. Um, I am appealing to your emotional, uh, uh, the emotional part of your mind first. Um, oh, no, no, no. Akka, he did something, and it is fucking ridiculous. Juwan was um, shot and paralyzed. That's it. He was shot and paralyzed 
by the uh, by the Trenton Police Department. Now, do you want to know what he was doing when he was shot and paralyzed by the Trenton, New Jersey Police Department? Now, remember, we were talking about being black in public and being a black man in a parking lot. Well, he was getting a, 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 getting a, 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 a cup of tea from his car. He had a, he had a, he had a cup of tea, iced tea. He had a, he had, he had a cup of iced tea in his car and he went out to his car to his, get his cup of tea out of it. And in the process of getting his tea out of his car, he was shot and paralyzed by the Trenton police department. So, for those keeping score, the things that black men cannot do in society. Walk down the street. Stand in a parking lot. Drink iced tea. Um, start just keeping that keep that list going. But yes, this is this is a this is a black man who was shot and paralyzed by the Trenton Police Department for getting a cup of iced tea out of his car. Oh, don't worry. I'll get there, Marcus. I'll get there. Don't worry, Marcus. Okay? Don't worry. So, uh, uh, Aspen, he's got a tactical T. No, but here's, here's, the, here's the real story, right? Here's the real story. He was getting a drink. He was getting his iced tea cup out of his, uh, out of his car when he, uh, after he parked out front of his home shortly after midnight on February, uh, February 12th. A group of men in dark clothing and masks in an unidentified vehicle parked, par, uh, parked boxing his vehicle in. They did not identify themselves. He had no idea who they were. Once out of their vehicle, the men began to yell and scream at Henderson, who then attempted to use his phone to call the police for help. One of those men smashed the driver's side window and Henderson was then shot four times. Quote, this group of men appearing as many other group of dangerous criminals from a movie turned out to be the Trenton Police Department. This quote is from the lawsuit itself. He's now paralyzed from the chest down. He will never be able to run with his child. He will never be able to walk again. He will forever experience bowel and bladder incontinence. His life is forever ruined and changed because he dared go to his car and get a cup of tea out of it. And during such four unidentified, ununiformed, unmarked, uh, uh, ununiformed officers from the Trenton Police Department attempted to box his vehicle in in the middle of the night in an unmarked vehicle and no one is sure, by the way. I'm, this is, here's a direct quote. Here's a direct quote from from one of the attorneys. There are many unknowns in the case, such as the plain clothed officer's objective that night. We don't even know what the cops claim to have been doing. Four unidentified, ununiformed, police officers in an unmarked vehicle attempted to box a citizen's vehicle in and proceeded to shatter his fucking windshield and shoot him four times. Never announcing themselves, never fucking, we don't know shit. All we know is that 
black man in a car at midnight with a cup of iced tea is worthy of being shot as far as the Trenton Police Department is concerned. No uniforms, no badges, no IDs, no a statement of identification, no ID on the car, no clear objective, no nothing. They roll up like they're going to fucking carjack this motherfucker and just shoot him. The identities of the cops have been withheld. We don't even know who did the crime. The state has stepped in, essentially, and protected these officers. There is an active cover-up happening. We don't even know who the cops are. If it were the other way around, his name and face would be plastered on every news station in the country. Every single one. But since it's the Trenton Police Department, we don't even get to know what cops were fucking involved. <clears throat> they claim there's body cam footage, but they refuse to release it even after the Attorney General directive to release it. In 2000, a 2018 New Jersey Attorney General directive states video footage must be released publicly when requested once initial use of force is substantially complete, usually within 20 days. They refuse to release the footage. The Attorney General's office has deferred a separate probe into the officer's actions to the Union County uh, Prosecutor's office, quote, because of conflict of interest. So, what else? What else, Kai? This is bad enough, right? This is bad enough. Right, this is a black man who got shot four times and paralyzed from the chest down, ruining his, the rest of his life for getting iced tea out of his car. How possibly? After you know, stating that there's an active cover-up happening at the state level down, how possibly could you make this worse? They charged him with aggravated assault, resisting arrest, and obstruction of justice. Four counts. Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, who has taken over the case because of that conflict of interest, one of the first things they did was drop those charges. Even they couldn't defend it. It was the first thing the Trenton Police Department did, is bring him up on charges. <clears throat> When asked why, if he's such a guilty criminal who deserved to be shot, and there's this exculpatory evidence on the part of the officers in the form of b uh, body cam footage, why ever did you dismiss the charges then? Especially since they were for aggravated assault. Four counts. Why, why ever did you, did the prosecutor's office dismiss those immediately then? Well, the spokesperson refused to elaborate on that. <clears throat> the cops, at least what little bit of paper trail we have on this case, are claiming that they attempted to do a vehicle stop he was parked in front of his house. They attempted to do a vehicle stop and, uh, and Trenton's police street crime units identified only as 511 and 513 then uh, engaged with the suspect who refused to cooperate with detectives orders to roll down the window and exit the vehicle. 
They state that he was unable to provide driver's license or proof of the registration and insurance. And they claim he reached. That's it. They're claiming he reached. That's that's what it boils down to. That's what we have. They're saying that he reached into the back seat. So, yeah. He reached. I, I, this is, this is the story of Jawan R. Henderson, age 29 of New Jersey. Yeah, it's an old, it's an old fashioned lynching. Yes. It's, it's, it's an old fashioned lynching. hundred percent. Um, all right. Now that I know what's, uh, what that is, um, let's see. Um, so yeah, I figured given that we were talking about, you know, attempting to exist while black in society that Mr. Henderson's story would probably be the, 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 the appropriate place to go from there that, you know, you can't stand in a parking lot. You can't get a cup of iced tea out of your, your, your car. You can't do anything. Meanwhile, I've been apologized to by a cop who got his ass reamed by his field captain because he dared try and fuck with a judge's son. Yeah. No, there's nothing systemic going on at all. Good on you, Marcus. Respect, man. Respect. Um, so... <clears throat> Chicago. Let's talk about it. Chicago. Uh, Adam Toledo and Anthony Alvarez. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the case. I'm not going to do a fucking deep dive on this one. They probably did have a... They may have had a firearm in their waistband. They may have reached. I don't know. We don't know. But all I do know... Um, is that Adam Toledo was 13 years of age and he was shot and killed, uh, by a, uh, uh by police, Chicago police officers in very questionable circumstances. Um, and the, the Chicago, uh, the, the state's attorney, um, uh, Kim Fox announced today a mm. um, few days ago announced a few days ago that there would be no charges against the officers. So even though the state attorney unequivocally stated that the officers quote, created the conditions that led to the shooting, there will be no charges filed against them. So Anyone surprised? Fucking Chicago PD shot a kid and there's not going to be any charges filed. I, I, it's worth noting, we talked about this a few days ago, um, Chicago holds the record right now for youngest uh, person killed in the country by police officers um, for, the, for the year. For the year. For the, uh, no, no, no. For a few years. I think it was, I think it was a decade. Um, yes, it was 2013. So from 2013 forward, um, Chicago PD actually holds the record for youngest uh, child shot by police officers. Um, so yeah, I, I you know, <laughs> it's not a cl it's not a clean cut and dry case. It isn't. They might have had firearms. They might have reached. They might have, you know, that's that's the thing on that one. It's 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 the, the Rosa Parks thing. Y'all know that Rosa Parks wasn't the first choice 
for being the, the, the like face of the uh, civil rights movement, right? Like there was a, there was a young unwed mother, uh, a young unwed pregnant woman um, who was the first one that should have been the, the case, but because she was an unwed mother, she was deemed not a viable candidate and not the most emotionally relatable one. So they went, uh, they, they ignored her and went with Rosa Parks instead later. Yeah. That's not the first time that that sort of thing has happened that unfortunately reform is not going to, um, <clears throat> come to that case. <sighs> So, let's talk about, um, oh, we'll get there. Yes, binary, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> like I said, I've got a list. <laughs> we're, we're, we are, um, we're a few deep. Let's just put it that way. We're a few deep. Um. I actually have, did I do, okay, is this the one? Yes, there's that one, and there's that one. So there we go. Um, <laughs> um, Balls deep soon, yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about the DOJ and criminal reporting in this country. So we don't actually know things like the uh, statistics involving hate crimes, the statistics involving um, officer-involved shootings, fatalities, officer-involved uh, like rates of, uh, of abusive force or excessive violence. We don't know any of these things at a national level. Why, you're asking? Because we don't have mandatory reporting of these statistics. These numbers are optional for local, state, county agencies to report up to the federal level. So the Department of Justice doesn't actually have a firm understanding of hate crime statistics, of police officer involved violence rates. They don't have firm numbers on sexual abuse by police officers. They don't have firm numbers on basically anything because all of this is optional reporting. And as you can probably already imagine, when you have a group of uh, individuals who are abusing a system <clears throat> or utilizing an abusive system, that they may not necessarily want to narc on themselves. So here's what we do know. The Department of Justice has come out with a recent report that one of the pieces of evidence that is readily apparent in it is that there has been a decrease in reporting efforts to accurately rep or document violence against Asian Americans, Black Americans, and LGBTQ plus people. The amount of police departments that have submitted statistics to the DOJ has actually decreased. Um, more than, uh, more than 12,000 law enforcement agencies across the country reported zero hate crime numbers. Miami, Little Rock, Huntsville, places where hate crimes happen. They are reporting none. Just a handful of cities and towns bothered to report uh, uh, hate crimes in 2020. It is to the uh, it is to the point, and if you if you want to look at some of this, here is the crime data explorer for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Okay, if you want to parse some of this data for yourself, the link is in chat. It is a fascinating the the uh, the CDE is a fascinating toolkit 
to avail yourself of. Um, but what it boils down to is that essentially no one is reporting any of these numbers. Um, and as such, we don't actually know the rates of this happening because, well, the most accurate numbers would come through this system. Now, we have independent third parties that are tracking some things. So what we do know is that hate crimes are actually on the increase, both according to independent journalists and academic study and per the DOJ themselves. But what we don't know is where and what, because the fact of the matter is, is that the hate crime reporting is on the decrease. So that's where we are now. The, the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism in, uh, at, the Cal, uh, at Cal State San Bernardino suggests that hate crime increased 46% from the previous year across 14 metropolitan areas of study. At the same time, if you were to look at the DOJ and the FBI statistics on the matter that were submitted by those areas, you would see a decrease. So we have essentially zero accuracy in hate crime reporting in the United States. We have no methodology to implement it. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's fully voluntary. Um, there are some beacons of hope. Um, Los Angeles and New York actually did improve their hate crime data reporting. They are being more open with it. They, Im they improve their reporting mechanisms and they are being more transparent with their data sets. They are still a shithole and their police departments are never to be trusted. But as far as their data sets go, it is better. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> hey, Level. The a level said the multi-million dollar five-year-old justice center in my town had to close because of legislation decreasing punishment for minor crimes. In other words, they can't do enough small petty arrests to keep revenue up. Exactly. <sighs> okay. Yeah, on to this one. Um, Dalton, Georgia. This is, uh, given the, 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 the breadth of, like, some of the stories we've been talking about, right, the, the, the massive malfeasances, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot and um, non-binary, I don't have that data, but use the CDE and you might be able to figure that out. Um, I figure I'd pivot to something micro rather than macro, right? Dalton, Georgia. Shithole, right? Shithole. But lawsuit in federal court right now. Police officer, uh, a guy by the name of uh, <clears throat> Ethan Wayne Pugh. Or Puff. It could be Puff. It's a GH. It could be Pugh or Puff. Either way, it's a funny name. Ethan Wayne Pugh. And the city of Dalton are both listed as defendants in a federal lawsuit because, well, it seems that our, our boy here um, violated oath of public officer, committed sexual battery, aggravated sexual battery, and public indecency because, well, <sighs> you see... A lot of uh, police departments um, like to run summer internship programs. It's, it's, it's a way for them to reach out to the community. It's a way for them to recruit from the community and build the next generation of police officers. All right. Well, <clears throat> during the summer of 2019, when Jane Doe, became 21, she signed up to be an intern at the Dalton police officer with the goal of, quote, becoming the fourth generation of her family 
as a police officer. She would have been the first woman in her family to be a police officer, carrying on the tradition of her grand, uh, her great grandfather and grandfather and father before her. Right? She's carrying on a, a an honorable tradition within her family lineage of becoming a police officer. So she became an intern at the police department. Part of her duties were weekly ride-alongs, right? Observing patrol officers and spending the day with them and figuring out what it is to be a cop, right? Well, on that fateful day of July 8th, she our, our Jane Doe was assigned to a ride-along with Pew. While they were walking towards the patrol car, Pew then purposefully and intentionally grabbed Miss Doe's buttocks and did so without warning or consent. He, once inside the vehicle, he then drove them to a secluded and empty lot where he parked the car in which he and Ms. Doe were the only occupants, <clears throat> both seated in the front with locked doors of the patrol car, and then without warning or consent from our <clears throat> our plaintiff in this case, the defendant, Officer Pew, then leaned over and began to forcefully kiss Miss Doe on the mouth with, uh, with his tongue. She attempted to pull away from him uh, and went against the passenger door and did not kiss him back. He then shoved his hand down her pants and, per the complaint, quote, committed a sexual act that was unwanted, uninvited, and unwarranted. It didn't stop there. Because after sexually assaulting this young woman, the ride-along continued. The afternoon wasn't over. During this, he repeatedly would drive to secluded spots, park the patrol car with the doors locked, and then, at one point in the afternoon, quote, in a frightening tone of voice, commanded Ms. Doe to perform a sex act on him. Fearing for her safety, Ms. Doe, because they were alone and Pew was armed and much larger than her, according to descriptions, um, complied because in the complainant's ver uh, uh, testimony, quote, fearing that defendant Pew would rape her if she did not. He then drove them back to police headquarters where he threatened Ms. Doe, directing her not to tell anyone what happened because, one, he would get fired, two, his wife would come after Ms. Doe, and three, no one would believe her anyway if she reported him. She ended her internship at the police department after Pew repeatedly sent her sexually explicit contact, uh, uh, content, including photographs and videos of himself while well, doing the things that you know he was doing. She asked him to stop. He did not, of course. And at one point, Pew called her and attempted to FaceTime with her. She did not accept the call. Doe later befriended a director of a local uh, center for those who had been sexually abused and confided in her what had occurred. And with that support, Pew then reported to the police department July 10th, 2020, what had occurred. That very same day, Pew resigned um, and, well, uh, the department, to their credit... To their credit, immediately handed over the investigation to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Knowing that it was a conflict of interest for them to investigate this, they turned it over. The grand jury indicted him and said, quote, while on duty as a police officer, he did engage in sexual contact with a stu college student doing an internship with the police department as signed to a ride along with. 
Um, so, yes. Um, it looks like he signed a waiver of pre-disciplinary hearing um, saying, I did not treat a group of females with respect and was not courteous to them. Unwelcome requests and comments may have led this group of females to feel intimidated and uncomfortable in the workplace. But either way, uh, motherfuckers being brought up, right? Like he's, he's got a grand jury on his ass. He's fucked. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I gotta pull that. I gotta pull that one. Um, yeah, exactly. Beastical covered all his bases, not his first radio. Why do those kinds of assholes keep pursuing? Uh, after doing that kind of thing, uh, shit, the last thing you should be doing is going anywhere near him. I know, right? Um, this time we won't investigate ourselves. Cops, for once. I know, right? Um, right, Cupcake? So, that one at least is going down, it looks like. He, he looks like he's going to go down for some shit. Um, now, let's look at the off-duty officer in Kenosha. Um, this is, we, we have finally made our way to, um, <clears throat> back to Kenosha, right? Like we, 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 of course, inevitably, inexorably, like the sands of fucking time, find our way back to Kenosha. Uh, um, so This was redacted surveillance footage from the Kenosha Unified School District where an off-duty officer serving as the school resource officer, which I'm not even sure how this fucking works. Um, either way, a girl got into a fight with another student during lunch in the lunchroom, right? This is, this is, this is, this is just, this shit happens. This shit happens. It's fucking high school. Jesus Christ. Their fucking prefrontal cortex is barely grown at that point. It's fucking, you cannot rely on children to be the voice of reason in the room. And if you are, God help you, you're fucked in the head, right? Kai's Law, so tech support, anarchist tech support says, Kai's Law, as a compliment to Godwin's Law, any discussion of police violence will in eventually lead back to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, I like it. Um, so during a, f uh, during a fight, um, yes, yes, if the, 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 exactly, Caboose, if the child is the only reasonable voice in the room, you've gone too, too far. Um, so... A girl gets into a fight in a fucking lunchroom, right? This is this is an everyday occurrence everywhere in the world, right? This just happens. This just happens. Hormones and pre lack of prefrontal cortex, cortex development and just inter social interactions with human beings, right? We're higher primates. We get violent from time to time. Like, shit happens, all right? Plan on it. So... An off-duty officer working as a part-time security uh, security guard at the school fucking rushes in to break up the fight. Here it is. I? Oh, fuck you. Just get this text off the screen. God, the BBC sucks. All right, so a couple of girls get into a fight. Shit's happening. Cool. Get the text off the screen. God, the BBC sucks. It's very difficult to see. But what is occurring here is a grown man with his knee on a high school girl's throat. He is putting his weight on her throat with his fucking knee. Hang on.
There we go. This is better. This is better. Fuck the BBC. God, they suck. Okay. It's like the second thing they teach you at security school to never do that. Holy fuck. I know, right? So, here we go. A couple of girls fighting. Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. All right? Throw her to the ground. Pull off the other student. Here's the issue. This is a grown man with his leg and knee on a high school girl's 12-year-old. Um, unified. It's not even high school. This is fucking middle school. This is middle school. I'm sorry. This is unified district, so this is middle school. This is a 12-year-old. This is a fucking middle schooler. It's not even a fucking that. This is a grown-ass police officer with his fucking knee on a 12-year-old girl's neck, pinning her to the ground. Didn't Kenosha learn a thing or two? I'm just, you know. <clears throat> I, I thought, maybe, maybe. <laughs> exactly tech support exactly little in inside baseball uh fucking uh it humor from tech support love it i was scared for my life exactly oh they learned just the wrong lesson i suppose i suppose um yes the officer oh by the way the officer resigned but has not been charged as is tradition, as is tradition, um, the officer has resigned, but not been charged. Um, so, <laughs> uh, uh, Wither said, this cop's definitely a part of the 40% if they have anyone in their life. Oh, God, yes. And that 40%, as was pointed out earlier, that 40% is uh, voluntary reporting. So the fact of the matter is, is that 40% of cops, when that study was done, were willing to say, yeah, I kicked the shit out of my spouse. How high is that number actually? 65, 85? How, high, how terrifying is it to be in a relationship with a fucking cop? Right? Like that's, that's, that's a terrifying fucking uh, uh, proposition. Um, hold on, let me just fix something here. There we go. Uh, yeah, that that was a voluntary reporting number. I can only imagine. Yeah, forty percent minimum. It's a minimum, right? Um, so everybody knows. By the way, we've now done about an hour and a half on police malfeasances, uh, uh, police malfeasance in America. And I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tabs open for these stories. We have done, we have done an hour and a half on fucking police malfeasance and I still have eight to go. Nah, nah, everything's good. Everything's good. I haven't even gone abroad, by the way. I considered, I considered including other stories that I had in my list from abroad. There was some shit from Indonesia. There was one from China. There was one from Europe. I believe it was Germany or something. Um, I, I had a few from abroad. I was like, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is ridiculous. Um, oh, we covered the young girl who was strip searched in the UK and uh, she was sexually assaulted. She was raped. She was raped. Uh, we covered that one last week, Marcus. Yeah, that was that was in the previous Popo's Bizarre Adventures. <sighs> I could do, yeah. Oh, yeah, I could do six hours on cops once a week. Easy. Um, I am considering breaking these up into segments, potentially. Like, we'll just do that cop, that cop, that cop, that cop sort of thing. I mean, this is this is just infinite content. Um, so.
another civil federal civil uh, civil rights lawsuit. Um, fucking another one. This one is infinitely Kenosha. Yeah, basically. Um, this one is, uh, this one has been filed by a black police officer, which I mean, can we just take a moment? Homie. I mean, this, this is a federal civil rights lawsuit, um, by a black police officer in Maryland. It was filed today. Um, the Maryland National Capital Park Police, apparently during the uh, during the BLM protests, Officer Mark Miles is alleging. He was subjected to discrimination, harassment, and retaliation after reporting discriminatory conduct in the form of texts and other messages being shared amongst the police officers talking about killing Black Lives Matter protesters. What it amounts to is we're talking about texts that say things like, they want a race war, okay, let's go, right? Fucking shit like that. We're, 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 we're talking about, you know, condoning the next civil war, um, racist jokes, race war, support for extremist raci racist militias, overt threats of violence against black citizens, straight up. Um one of one instance in the lawsuit states that uh, uh, one of the people mentioned the supervisor uh, a person by the name of Harvey um, frequently quote quote frequently talked about murdering Black Lives Matter protesters uh, uh, adding defendant Harvey texted things like time to start killing. Of course, this individual did not respond to uh, to a request for comment. But um, the Maryland Nas uh, the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission uh, said its police department quote does not tolerate racism or harassment in the park uh, in the workplace while tr uh, while tolerating racism and harassment in the workplace. So, you know, take that statement for what it's worth. Um, they're they're saying that when a when a series of secret text messages among a group of park police officers came to the attention of our management, we promptly initiated an investigation and took appropriate action, adding that several officers were suspended and referred for termination. Um, the suggestion that park police management ignored allegations of misconduct by this group of officers is simply incorrect, and we will make the results of the trial board process public at the appropriate time. That time, of course, is not now. That time isn't, you know, but sometime in the future, we're, we'll, we'll sure, sure do that. Um, the lawsuit also states that the texts included racist and bigoted comments about Hispanics, Asians, and the LGBTQ plus community. In one exchange, Miles' lawsuit said, Harvey wrote that her comments were jokes and asked others not to, quote, Turn these texts over to internal affairs and get me fired for hate speech. So she clearly had a mens rea, right? And for those of you, a guilty mind. Very important in legal illegal circles. Mens rea is a very important thing to prove. Well, there you go. Uh, the supervisor knew what, what they were doing. Um... Yeah, appropriate action. Exactly, Rev. Appropriate action. Sweep under the rug. Proceed to ignore and deny. Um, the, 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 the lawsuit is seeking a jury trial, compensatory damages, and uh, termination of the individual who still hasn't been terminated. By the way, the, the supervisor, the, the, you remember the park police were like, oh, we fired a bunch of people. They didn't fire the person who was like leading this group. That person's still in a position of power. <clears throat> First the code speak, now the Latin, you champagne socialist. I know, right? 
just because I understand the base bare, bare minimum of our legal system. Right, Marcus? Um, <clears throat> so, oh, Jesus Christ. We can't watch this one, but I will tell you, if you go to the, um, if you go to the cop watch shared content section, you can watch this video. This video is not TOS. Um, so Edward Bronstein, Edward Bronstein had an encounter with the California highway patrol, which is always a situation. Anybody who's ever dealt with CHP knows they're kind of insane. They have actual violent like street gangs in their, like they have a multitude of street gangs uh, in their organization. Um, the CHP is a very problematic organization um, and they will kill a bitch. All right. They will kill a bitch. Edward Bronstein. Oh no. What did Eric Estrada do now? Said Aka. Um, Eric, uh, uh, Edward Bronstein. That's two Edwards tonight though, by the way. It's not a good night for Edwards, dude. Edwards fucking are not doing well tonight. Um, so if you want to see the unedited full length video of this encounter, um, then you can see it in the cop watch section of our shared content. I posted the link there. Um, the CHP fought tooth and nail for two fucking years. Um, for this video never to be see the light of day because there's an active cover up engaged as well. Edward Bronstein was suffocated to death by C a pile of CHP officers. At one point in the video, you can hear him state unequivocally, I can't breathe. They then proceeded to pile on him more. It is at one point when the medic arrives, when the EMT arrives, that he is no longer alive. I would say conscious, but he wasn't, he wasn't unconscious. He was dead. He had, he had passed by that point. And they pick him up and they try and smack him and wake him up. But he's dead. He is a corpse. The life, the flare, the light, it's gone. They suffocated the man to death. And then... The medical examiner got in on the conspiracy. Because the medical examiner ruled that Edward Bronstein died from acute methamphetamine intoxication and that the direct cause of death was unknown. So if you're wondering who else to throw on the pile of never to be trusted and is slash a cop to prosecutors, judges, medical examiners, never to be trusted. They are on team more often than not. So that's where we are with that. Um, there's not much more to say about it. It is, uh, it is, Yeah, I, I, it, it seems to be <laughs> spickles from crack. I mean, meth on the body and call it a day. Metal examiners too. Exactly. Tech support. Um, it seems to be a recurring theme. It seems to be a recurring theme. Um, a complete callous, careless lack of respect of life and fellow human beings on the part of cops because they don't see us as human beings. Um, if you're watching this segment, go find my origins on, uh, origins of and problems with modern policing. Um, it's linked somewhere in the proudly radical YouTube channel. It's um, it's worth watching. Um, this is, this is what they do. This is who they are. This is, this is how it was designed. This is what they are intended for. 
this isn't a mistake. This isn't a slip up. This isn't a whoopsie daisy. This is a concerted effort by an occupying army that has been empowered by a oligarchical hierarchical system that intends to keep the citizenry of this nation state in line complying with force. And this is just another example of it. And so, like I said, you can watch the entire, it's 17 and a half minutes. If you want to watch a guy get suffocated to death by cops, um, you know, uh, you know, watch at your own discretion. Uh, Um, yeah, let's just stay in California. Let's just think, uh, let's just, uh, you know what? No, I'm sorry. Never mind. Um, do we have that one? Yes, I can show that one. Um, Stony Progressive, thank you for the follow. Um, so, okay, that one I can show. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's stay in the region and let's hop, let's hop back over to, um, let's hop, uh, hop back over to Texas for a minute. Richardson, Texas, the police officers, two of them, two police officers from Richardson, Texas are suing their own police department. It's not because of racial profiling. It's not because of sexual assault. It's not because of um, they were abused or beaten or raped. It's because the police officers maintain that Richardson Police Department in Richardson, Texas has a forced quota system that in fact what is happening behind the scenes is that they are required by senior leadership to follow a ticket quota system two officers Kayla Walker and David Conklin good on them they filed the lawsuit they were retaliated against after they made public statements to the uh, city council and media outlets, after they filed criminal reports with outside law enforcement authorities about the illegal, illegal, ticket quotas are illegal, the ticket quota system in Richardson, Texas. The hilarity of this story... <clears throat> is that the city council and the Richardson City, uh, the Richardson uh, Police Department and the city itself maintains that the quota policy is not illegal because it was a part of a broader policy that included components that weren't illegal. Officer, I was merely driving. Yes, I had murdered this individual and thrown them in the trunk of my car, but the act of driving is not illegal. Therefore, the murder and the transport of the body clearly can't be illegal as well because they were taking part, they were taking, uh, they were part and parcel with the legal act as well. This is the actual argument that the Richardson Police Department and the Richardson City Council is attempting to put forth is that because this illegal policy was taking part as a subset of a larger set of policies, some of which aren't illegal, it therefore makes it legal. I'm sure. Marcus, can you fact check that for us? Is that, that's law, right, Marcus? That's how that works. So, I, I, I don't, 
you know, again, Texas, Texas, just stay the fuck out of Texas. Just stay the fuck out of Texas. Do yourselves a favor. Never, never, never set foot in the state of Texas. If you are gay, if you are fucking, if you, if you can have kids, if you are a person of color, you know what? If you just, just stay the fuck out of Texas, dude, Texas will get you dead. Texas will get you raped. Texas will get you imprisoned. That's just, that's, that's the only thing waiting for you in Texas is death, rape, or imprisonment. It is a shithole of a location on this earth and should probably be cordoned off just so it doesn't contaminate the rest of us. But, you know, free travel across borders. Uh, let's see. I presume the argument was written by a lawyer whose next words were, uh, okay, I did the things. Let me in the narcotic evidence room. <laughs> Says Marcus. Uh Oof, I may or may not be going to uh, Texas to visit my nephew. Good luck, Kaiser. Good luck. Um, so staying in the region, like I said, staying in the region. We want to we want to stay in the Southwest right now. Let's stay with the the, the just absolute shithole that is the, the the U.S. Southwest. Arizona. What's Arizona gotten up to? Uh, Arizona has definitely gotten up to some shit, right? What are you What are you gonna do with them in Arizona? The Arizona House voted last Wednesday to make it illegal to take photos or video recordings of police officers in some circumstances. Um, <clears throat> it would be illegal in the state of Arizona to record within 15 feet of an officer interacting with someone unless the officer gave permission. Uh, I'm sure a few of you are already imagining how this will be abused. Within 15 feet, it's illegal. What if the cop walks towards you while you're legally filming them in a public right-of-way? Well, hypothetical person I'm responding to, that then becomes illegal. The cop is free to close the distance, and it then becomes illegal. Good night, God Punk. Take care of yourself. Sleep well. And if you walk away, that's a charge. Yes. Yeah. This is... This is unconstitutional on so many levels. This is unconstitutional on so many levels. Uh, fucking... Even the Associated Press has raised, se quote, serious constitutional issues. The National Press Photographers Association is in direct opposition to the bill and says we'll fucking sue on First Amendment grounds right away. Um, <clears throat> refusal to stop recording when an officer orders it would be a 30-day jail sentence. There you go. I, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Um, literally can murder on there. Yep. Yeah. Um. So there you go. There's that's what's happening in Arizona right now. Is that the cops basically have a universal arrest clause for anybody attempting to like film them commit malfeasance. Um, now let's jump around a bit. We have three more. We have three more. We're in the home stretch. We're in the home stretch. Three more, three fucking more. We're in the home stretch, right? Um, you know what? Let me hang on. Give me one sec here while I, do a bunch of shit. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm fucking stressing. Um, I'm stressing fucking my browser right now. 
I'm making it work. I'm making it fucking work. Uh, okay, bear with me. Bear with me. I had been closing these tabs, but what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm undoing my closing and I'm pulling them from memory. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so. Oh, biddies. Uh, thank you, tech support. Um, to circle back, this makes me want to get buddy buddy with some of the cop customers in my part time job, uh, part time gig. Hard to plant seeds any other way. I mean, tech support, it's worth doing. Um, who said, uh, Craigo, hello to you as well. Um, oh, I just heard back. The artist who's going to do the JoJo fucking Popo's Bizarre Adventures uh, artwork has got be gotten back to me. Um, she'll do it. She's she's in. So, all right. <clears throat> cool. We'll have some decent thumbnails for this. Um, all right. So, we were going to jump over to Arkansas. Um How are, how are the pedo neighbors? Uh, they refused to, I, I think they got the, I think they, I think they, they picked up what I was attempting to do. Apparently I wasn't subtle enough, but they, um, they like, they wouldn't hang out. They would not hang out that or I was too old for him. I was probably too old for him. I was probably too old for him. Um, but yeah, they, 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 he pushed the fucking, he moved the needle a lot. He refused to fucking meet up. Um, yeah, Arkansas. It's not. It's not the worst, Rev. It's not the worst. It's by far not even close to the worst uh, for the night. Um, so let's see. All right, Arkansas. <sighs> so, um, Michael Davis. Michael Davis uh, is a former Arkansas deputy who was convicted Friday of negligent homicide of a 17-year-old by the name of Hunter uh, Britton. Basically, back in June 23rd of last year, he pulled over. Uh, he hold, he pulled Hunter over. Dude, if Hunter isn't the most fucking like Zoomer name, right? Like that's dude. That's some straight Zoomer shit. Hunter. Um, he pulled Hunter over and for a traffic stop and well <laughs> the teen exited his truck and reached into the bed of his pickup truck failing to comply with Davis's commands to show his hands. There was no gun in the back of the pickup. There was no nothing. He shot him in the fucking neck. He, he shot him in the fucking neck. And the jurors acquitted him of the manslaughter and uh, manslaughter charge and found him guilty of the misdemeanor charge. Hence why he's only doing a year is that the Arkansas jurors saw fit to not charge the cop. Well, to not find not not charge, but to not find him guilty of the greater manslaughter charge. So, our good old boy Michael Davis here, who shot a seventeen-year-old in the neck for not complying with his commands, got all hopped up on his warrior cop is a warrior mentality as again i'm gonna reference origins of and problems with modern policing i have a segment it's an essay on my website it's a segment that'll be going up on youtube shortly this is part of the problem i'm sure he was all hopped up on power and fear and because the kid didn't comply and he reached into the back of his pickup the first thing that that popped into 
fucking Michael Davis's head was, oh my God, he's got a fucking machine gun, the likes of which we mount to a fucking helicopter in the back, and he's about to spray a thousand rounds at me and kill me. So he fucking shot the kid in the neck. And then the idiot jurors who are subject to generations of propaganda and fear campaigns erred on the side of the officer because they always do because prosecution presents such a case that, Oh, our beloved police need this need to believe they need, they need defending because they're out there in the streets every day protecting us from wanton destruction, the likes of which comes in the form of scary 17 year olds. So cop shot a 17 year old in the neck, killed him and he'll be doing a year. (sighs) For not showing his hands to the police officer. Jeez. Ah, noted, Rev. Let's jump back to Arizona. This, in the grand scale of things, is not that bad. This is actually kind of mundane. But it happens in the small and it happens in the big, right? Police malfeasance, uh, police abuse of authority doesn't just happen <clears throat> in the form of executing black men who dare drink iced tea in their car, right? It, it, it's not only falsely, it, it's not only fabricating evidence to falsely convict a black man in front of an all white jury. It, it, sometimes it's <clears throat> simple abuses. This one does include a physical assault, but it's very quick. And in the grand scheme of things, it's actually mild, especially considering what we've talked about tonight. But this is worth watching. It's not the highest, uh, highest quality footage, but it, just, it, it did just happen. Um, this happened in Flagstaff. A uniformed uh, police officer was filmed um, conducting themselves in a very interesting manner. Um, This was posted to YouTube last Wednesday. The police officers believe that there is a warrant for this, this woman's arrest. There is not. She had a warrant for arrest, and it was resolved. It was not on the digital system. It had been resolved, but the police officers were aware of the previous warrant and therefore refused to double check anything. They believed their gut. They believed their prior knowledge and refused to actually do any investigation. And in the pursuit of said justice, the true nature of policing, the true nature of what it takes to be a police officer and not get drilled, drummed out during the academy comes to bear. Hey, let him run your knee. We will let you go. Stop. You cannot arrest me until I know I have a warrant. Hey! Hey! Hey, you can't hit a girl like that! Like that. Hey, hey, what the fuck? Please? 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 You cannot arrest me until I know I have a warrant. Hey! Hey! You cannot arrest me until I know I have a warrant. That's it. That's what it looks like. That's what happens when you challenge a police officer's power. Please? That is the full force you of the state. You cannot arrest me until I know I have a warrant. Hey. Hey. Hey, you can't hit a girl like that. Hey. 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 That's it. That's it in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, in a microcosm. This is what it looks like. 
This is Dig. He does not, in fact. He does not get jumped. <clears throat> if he got jumped, I'd show the rest of it. Um, yes, he punched through, too. Yes, he, it was a good punch. Um, he, he, no. He, he balled up his fists and stru- uh, fist and struck her in the face, punching her with decent force because she refused to comply with an unlawful order. This is what it looks like when the state's force comes to bear. That's what a monopolization of force looks like. It looks like a police officer punching a woman in the face because she refuses to be arrested illegally. Because he hasn't done his due diligence. Because he is going on prior knowledge that he has not refreshed. Now, what I can say is that what has happened is exactly what you think has happened. The officer has been placed on paid vacation. It is Arizona, after all. Um, so he's getting a paid vacation right now. Also, if you're wondering... Will this create any generational trauma? Trauma? Yes. The answer is yes. Her um, three and nine-year-old children got to witness the assault on her by the police officer. And I can speak to this personally. For those that don't think these things leave an impact, something is, let's say, mundane. Um, When I was in fifth grade... I was subject to state propaganda in the form of dare uh, the dare program. Now, by age, f- uh, by grade five, I, you can imagine I was a fairly intellectually precocious child, and I had had <clears throat> chemistry sets and those sorts of things given to me long before then, and I had a rudimentary understanding of chemical processes. And the city that I lived in at the time is well known for an international uh, corporation, a multinational corporation that specializes in chemical processing. So I had friends whose parents were chemists, PhD level. Um, So when a police officer came into my class and looked at me and stated unequivocally that LSD was manufactured in toilets, I knew that I had just been lied to by a police officer who my teacher deferred to. This is a singular moment in my life. It was the moment that I stopped trusting authority. It was the moment I stopped trusting adults. It was this, the moment that I stopped trusting teachers. It was the moment I stopped trusting police. It was the moment I stopped trusting the country. It was the moment I stopped trusting any hierarchical structure. I didn't know the nuances and details. I didn't know why. But I knew that I had just been lied to by somebody who is an authority in my society that others defer to, up to and including my teacher, who just turned her classroom over to him. And this program is sponsored at a federal level. The the government itself said to me he was trustworthy. And he just lied to my face. If you don't think that that nine-year-old has a serious problem with cops now, you are a fool. That woman's nine-year-old watched a police officer punch their mother in the face for no reason. Congratulations. You have another citizen who does not believe in the rule of law. You have another, another citizen that does not respect police. You have another citizen who will come to our side. If you are on the side of defund the police is bullshit and defund the police is this and that and it's a counterproductive argument, well, congratulations. 
the number one thing that works for my team is officers like that. I don't have to come up with a pithy slogan. I don't have to do any propaganda. All I need to do is show a video of an officer punching a mother in the face for a warrant that doesn't exist. That's it. That's, that does my job for me. So if you want to have police, if you want to have that system, then maybe you need to get your jack-booted jackal fucking dogs on a goddamn leash before somebody does something because this is getting out of fucking hand at this point. We've already burned half this fucking country to the ground over this shit in the past. We've had to have riots on an international scale because of this shit, right? Like how many more fucking 12 year olds need to have knees on their throats? How many more dudes need to be suffocated to death? How many mothers need to be punched in the face outside of their home in front of their children because cops can't even be bothered to check a fucking system whether this woman has a warrant or not. All he had to do was go to his stupid fucking patrol vehicle where we've spent tens of thousands of dollars to equip them with remote surveillance devices up to and including a digital database that uh, coordinates this information and check whether she had an active warrant before punching her in the face. This is the number one piece of propaganda against cops.